Okay, this engine is a timing chain engine. Uh, it's out of a 1999 Toyota Corolla. Uh, very, very durable, reliable motors. Very, very durable, reliable cars. Um, not exactly a motoring enthusiast's car, but if you're looking for reliable basic transportation, uh, this is one of your go-to vehicles. Um, so, what we've got here is a timing cover and I've loosened it all off so that it's easy, easy to get on with. Okay, And underneath you can see the timing chain. So down at the bottom you have the crankshaft and you have a timing gear back in behind this plate. I'm going to explain that plate in a minute. There's your timing gear back there and then this particular engine is a dual overhead cam engine. Okay, So one camshaft runs the intake side and one camshaft runs the exhaust side. Um, okay, cam timing. Well, for one thing, down at the bottom here, you've got this thing that looks like a gear, but it's not. What it is is a reluctor, and um, it is timed to the crankshaft. There's a key on here. I'm going to try to zoom down a little bit better. Okay, so this guy, you can see that there's a little key on the back of the shaft here. This thing is timed to the crankshaft. By the way, timing marks on the crankshaft, there's a little uh, dot uh, punched into the case of the motor down here. And there is also a little dot on the face of the gear back here. So that dot has to line up to that dot to make sure that your crankshaft is timed correctly. This thing here is actually part of the crankshaft timing uh, sending unit. On the bottom of the case, right here, is your cam position sensor. Okay, and here's the harness, sorry, crank position sensor. I'll get to the cam position sensor in a moment. So, this is basically like a little electromagnet, and the uh, the reluctor gear spins right in here. This is the seal where the end of the crankshaft protrudes out to the front of the motor. Okay, That little reluctor gear spins right in here and the teeth of the reluctor gear pass this electromagnet and create a pulse wave and they send that pulse. Think of a heart monitor at a hospital where you see the little beep, beep, beep and what you don't want to see is beep, right? Um, same thing here. So as the gear goes past, it will create a magnetic field and then collapse it, create it and collapse it. It works exactly the same way as a wheel speed sensor for ABS brakes and for uh, traction control. Um, and here's your uh, sending wires. So crankshaft timing is sent to the ECM. Uh, so too is camshaft timing. And on this motor, there's only the one cam timing unit. Uh, there it is right here. I've got it loosened up for you. That is your camshaft position sensor right there. Uh, basically the same as the crank position sensor. It lives in here and if you look at the end of the camshaft right here you have this leg and so every time this camshaft spins past that sensor again it creates a pulse wave and so what the engine's ECM is doing is comparing data from this sensor to data from the crank sensor and making sure that those two shafts are actually timed correctly. Now in this motor they only have one cam sensor. If you notice the second cam shaft is actually shorter and there's no sensor in here. Uh, newer motors you're starting to get much much more refined particularly if you have variable valve timing um, where these two uh, cam shafts will not run at the same timing, they won't be locked in because of variable valve timing, then you would have a second sensor for this camshaft. Um, if you look at the front end of the motor again, you can see that these two camshafts run together, the chain runs around both sprockets, and they both drive together. Okay? So the timing is basically established based on the one, and then the other one just along for the ride. Um, tensioning system on this is back to the front here and we have a uh, we have a tensioner 
Uh, first of all, we have a chain guide, that's this guy right here, that can move, and there's a flat spot in it right on the side right there. And on the inside of the timing chain cover, right here, there is a little oil pressure piston, okay, this guy right here. Um, notice there's a hole in the cover right here, and there's also a hole in the engine block right up here behind the chain. Okay, so engine oil pressure comes through that hole and it goes into that hole and it pumps up it pumps up that piston to create oil pressure and then this piston end right here pushes against the flat part of the tensioner right there to keep the chain tight. Okay, um, Needless to say this is one of those things that can fail um, if you don't do regular oil changes and all these little passages start filling up with gunk and sludge, this thing can get sticky. Also, when you first start your car in the morning, um, let it warm up properly, okay? Remember that this takes a moment or two to get oil pressure, and if you're jumping on the throttle right away and revving it, the chain, you know, is this loose when you rev it, um, very easy to skip a tooth, okay? So let your motor warm up. Um, do regular oil changes so you don't have sludge problems. Um, timing marks, Toyota did a really nice thing here and they actually put colored links on the chains okay? and there's timing marks on the cover and they correspond to the marks on the block and it makes it a little easier to time the chain. But this should be a lifetime system. Ironically this engine came to us because the crankshaft bearings were burned up these engines are so reliable, the owners sometimes ignore them, and then all of a sudden it started making clattering and banging noises, and they burned the connecting rod bearings right out of it. So we have it here at the school.